Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to share with you um, how my catacetums are doing for the month of June. So June just started, and as you can tell, um, a lot of the catacetums are just waking up. There are two that have been growing really quickly. It's um, that one right there and right there. Um, I think that is the uh, Portuguese star crossed with Lucis, and that one is Black Jade. So those two are the ones that are growing super quickly. They have a full reservoir, full waterings. They drink up the water reservoir almost every single day. So I have to fill that up. And the temperature here now is around 80s in the morning. And then at night it goes to about 60s. So it's kind of the perfect weather for catacetum growing. Also this specific area gets about eight hours of sunshine a day. So full bright light, no covering at all. And the rest of the time it's in full shade. So this kind of works well for my catacetums and I'll take you in closer um, so we can go check them out and talk a little bit more about them. So this is the catacetum Portuguese star crossed with Lucis. It's one of my biggest catacetums and the Lucis is known to be a giant parent. So that's why these ones have quite large pseudobulbs. Um, it currently has two growths and they're both about the same height. And then there's like a third one um, about half the size. If you notice there are these tiny white dots on the leaves. That is not spider mite damage. Um, it might be because this plant is starting to um, pull out a little bit of nectar from the leaves, but it's not detrimental to the plant. Some of the ants have been climbing on this to harvest that kind of sweet syrup coming from the leaves. But overall, the plant has not had problems. Um, in the past, a lot of my catacetums did have this kind of spotting, especially with the tigrinum hybrids. But I've noticed that over time, this kind of pitting or this kind of leaf spotting has decreased over time. So it may be because it's not getting left water. I don't know. I'm not sure what causes that, but it's not harmful to the plant. As you can see, um, I have this plant potted up in the PET method on the bottom are some rocks and there's a little bit of leca on top and then all of this is sphagnum moss so as you can tell right now there's a lot of water pulling on it there's a little bit of algae growth and i'm using slow release pellets for this plant the water reservoir is currently like right about an inch from the bottom of the pot and it will drink this whole thing up in less than a day so already in june i have to water this plant every day to make sure it stays hydrated if you look at the bulbs here this is from a couple years ago and the bulbs are still nice and tight there's a slight wrinkle into them but overall um, it's not really drying out so um, that is a good sign that they're getting enough hydration and um, this plant is growing quite well now looking from this angle you can see um, this is last year's growth so it had two growths and then this year it had three so I've had this plant since 2018, like late 2018. And so uh, this plant has been growing for quite some time. And it's been probably growing about two bulbs a year. And I'm thinking this is probably the year um, that this plant will flower. So that's it for this Portuguese star cross with Lucis. This plant is the Cloaceum Black Jade. And I think I've had this for about the same time I had um, the Lucis cross, the Portuguese star cross with Lucis. So I've had this for maybe three years now, and this is the fourth year. As you can see, each of the bulbs have been growing successively bigger. Uh, last year's bulb, which is that one, that's white still, um, has been growing a little bit bigger, and I'm hoping that the new growth will be even bigger and then it'll be ready to bloom. I'm looking forward to these flowers. I think they're supposed to be a green, kind of pileatum style, but I'm not sure. So um, that will be really exciting. This plant is also in the PET method. So there's rocks on the bottom, leca, and then um, moss for like half of the uh, bottle. And there's slow release pellets on top. And once again, I've been watering this um, almost daily now. So from beginning of June till the end of the growing season, it's getting water every day. It's a really thirsty plant and it's growing a lot, taking in a lot of water. So I need to water this one every day. It definitely finishes drinking up the you know one inch of water reservoir in one day so so this is a way for me to make sure that this plant stays well hydrated so the leaves of this plant are a little bit fatter and fuller than the um, other catacetum and i know that it doesn't have it's not as tall but even so it has a great look to it and as you can see the bulb itself this one is 
has a slight wrinkle but it's not too bad and that one's pretty plump on its own even this one is quite plump so all of them are well hydrated at this point and we're just hoping that we just maintain the watering keep the temperatures nice and warm and with the slow release pellets um, that this plant will be super healthy and ready to bloom uh, by the end of the season so I don't know if you can tell but the root system there is very fine compared to um, the Portuguese star cross with Lucis. They have very tiny small roots so I think that's why it's really able to um, really grab on to all that moisture and just really soak up a lot of the nutrients and waters really quickly. So aside from those really two big catechisms that are in full growth mode, um, there are a couple of catechisms I have that are like these three inch tall growths right now and they're just starting out roots so I have a chem uh, so I have a catechetum fimbriatum on the right um, the pileatum on the left and then on this side this one is the catechetum sanguinum kind of hidden behind right over here um, so that's probably like a four inch growth at this point and they all are potted in sphagnum moss as you can tell, they're just emerging from dormancy and they're really small compared to the other ones. So they have some catching up to do before I feel like these are considered mature blooming size plants. I started missing these plants about a month ago, maybe a little bit more because we've been having a couple of heat waves and we're on our third one now. So the humidity drops to like 10% during that time. And so that's how a lot of these plants start suffering because they get too dehydrated and they don't get any water and they just kind of suffer. So I tend to miss these plants a little bit, keep the moss just lightly moist. Um, I'm not doing any full waterings right now, but just so that um, the humidity is a little higher to help encourage growth from these plants. Um, also, the temperatures have just been heating up now as a consistent level. Um, and so I think these ones are emerging from dormancy a lot later than they usually do. Behind those plants, these ones are also three inch size. Um, this one is the Moniara Millennium Magic. This one is the Cloisio Orsawitzii. And that one is, I think, a cross between hmm, Grace Dunn and Dodsoniana. So those ones also are just emerging roots right now. Now, as for the rest of my collection, they are just waking up now. So the Cloisia Rebecca Northern has a tiny new growth right there. And the Cloisia Thialeo Chilla has a tiny one over there. And just looking at the runs all around, you'll see they have all these tiny little growths. They're not really ready for watering, but I am continuing to um, miss them to just increase the humidity and it's in a warm sunny place to encourage them to start growing and coming out of dormancy so that um, we can start seeing some new growth from some of these plants. One of my more interesting species is this um, Catacetum planiceps and as you can tell a lot of the old growths have started uh, growing along the length of the pseudobulb, which makes it a little bit harder to pot, but that's just kind of what it likes to do. It just likes having its um, new growths all up along the stem, and some of them are on the base, like on this one, which is a division. Okay, so for this division, there's a little basil keiki over there that's growing, basil growth, and then you can see how the other bulbs are been shriveled up, used up, and um, they will just uh, kind of continue to do that until um, it gets enough water for it to grow. And we're just going to wait for that little growth to um, get enough roots to be able to be watered. So this is the Catacetum Rebecca Northern Grapefruit Pink. It's a division that I have. And um, you can see this is last year's growth. And last year's growth is starting to get a little bit yellow. Even the year prior, which is that one, is also getting a little bit of yellow on the bottom, which is a bit concerning because that mean, that usually means rot has come into the bulb or set in, and so it's going to start breaking down and the bulb will not be surviving. So that is pretty scary. There is a tiny new growth right there, right at the corner, uh, right there and that is going to be the new bulb and hopefully that will sustain this plant and when it leaves out and it'll be ready to water then that is what is going to take over it looks like the older tuberose might not survive 
but this new one should so right now it's just peeking out it'll be a couple more weeks yet before it'll get water but for now there is hope for this one so next another one that has the same kind of thing going on with the yellow on the bottom going up the plant this is my Cloesia alexander sava and even though it's concerning these are the older bulbs um, this one right here is the newest bulb and the tiny little dot that is the newest growth coming out so that's not too concerning i'm just hoping that that new growth continues to um, move along and then we'll see how the plant will do i think it's going to lose two bulbs because they're just the older ones and so i think this is just what's going to happen those two bulbs will eventually die off and it'll just create a nice new fat bulb for the new season now this is the last one i'm going to share um, this is the Cloesia Grey Stun crossed with Tigrina. And as you can see, uh, the top of this older bulb has kind of rotted off. And um, the rest of the plant looks fairly healthy. Um, it's a little bit shriveled, but that's okay. That's pretty normal. And the back one, that back bulb right here, is the last year's growth. There are these two spots right here, right there, where um, a bulb used to be. And it rotted over winter because... Um, it just got too wet, it stayed too wet, it didn't have a chance to dry out, and that was an issue. And we're just waiting right now to see if any new growth will emerge. A lot of Cloesias and Cloesia hybrids um, tend to be blooming in the January season, so it tends to be a little slower than other catacetums to either wake up from dormancy or to start growth. And this one is actually one of the slowest ones. I don't see any movement at all. It's still um, kind of in its dormant phase. I don't see any eyes swelling or anything like that. So um, I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. It seems healthy so far. It's not getting any water, just light mistings. And um, there are a couple other really small plants like this that aren't really out of dormancy yet, um, but hopefully they will later in the season. That just means that some of my plants are really ahead of the game and some are really slow. That's just part of growing catacetums. That's um, depending on the hybrid and the species that you have, it really just depends when they come out of dormancy. So this is my catacetum collection and how they're doing in the beginning of June. Uh, as you can see, some are super ahead of the game, some are still sleeping, and some are somewhere in between. So it'll be a while um, before these ones are going to be in full growth mode and I'll share with you how they're doing. Um, if you like these types of videos where I kind of break down each individual, I guess, genus, um, let me know. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!